Good evening and welcome. We are live from Pretoria in Gauteng province. This is my Nesfos uh, radio program that is brought to you by the National Student Financial Aid Scheme in collaboration with Government Communications, GCIS. My name is Garisho Mamambulo. I'm your host tonight and I'll be with you throughout the program and I invite you to let us have a discussion about the National Student Financial Aid Scheme in relation to the 2018 application for financial aid. This program is live to at least 40 community radio stations throughout South Africa, and you can take part in our program by either calling us, where we will be opening the lines later in the program. That number is 0800-142-446. The line to call is 0800-142-446. Or you can join our social media platforms. For Facebook, simply search the name in full, National Student Financial Aid Scheme. Or you can follow us on Twitter. Our handle is MyNesfus. You can also follow us on our website where you can get the latest information and news relating to the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. Later in the program, we will hear about the online and manual application process. What are the key features in this uh, application process and what to look for? My experience of this this new form is that it is much easier as it gives useful information for me. And I could fully understand it. And of course, more on that in just about 10 minutes uh, from now. But first, we had the news about the big launch of August the 1st, where the National Student Financial Aid Scheme announced its partnership with the National Youth Development Agency to help young people in rural areas to access NSFAS application forms for 2018 in order to get financial assistance from the state own uh, uh, scheme, which is NSFAS. The announcement said... NYDA will make its branches and local offices available. Now, the question here is how will this work and how accessible will these centers be to the young people in the rural areas? Katu uh, Ramukumba is the chief executive officer of the National Youth Development Agency, and he was also at the launch that was held uh, outside Johannesburg in Ratanga on August the first. Eric Ludumedishen ki la morele en kelo nana olare na relagashwa tui. Rojoa mo Pretoria GCIS offices. You are welcome to call us in later in the program. We'll open the lines. But tonight we are discussing the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. It is about uh, the 2018 applications that have opened on the 1st of August. And we're now in the studio having the National Student Financial Aid Scheme representatives as well as the NYDA representatives who are available on the line to help us understand how the process is going to work. We go back on the line to the Chief Executive Officer of the National Youth Development Agency, Mr. Ramo Kumba. Good evening, sir, and thank you for joining us. Good evening to you and good evening to our listeners. Before you tell us about this partnership you have entered into with the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, can you please make us understand what the NYDA is about and later the link uh, to your role with NSFOS? Uh, the NYDA is an entity of government established uh, under Act number 54 of 2008, which is the National Youth Development Agency Act. Uh, it was established um, as a replacement of the two actual institutions, being the former National Youth Commission as well as the NYDA Youth Fund. Listeners would remember that the Youth Commission had the responsibility of looking and advocating for youth development across all sectors of society, while the Youth Fund was primarily responsible for the integration of young people in the mainstream economy of our country through skill development and youth owned enterprises. Mr. Mr. Ramukumba, I beg your pardon. It seems like we are experiencing 
a technical problem in terms of uh, the sound. It is quite not clear. I'm not sure maybe it could be um, uh, uh, your positioning. Can you try to, to, to move around? And of course, as, as, as you continue to, 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 to explain. Okay. Um, hopefully you can hear me better now. Um, as I was saying, the, the, two, the NYTA therefore then becomes responsible for the collapse and combined mandate of the two institutions I've made reference to. But over the budget, it's also expected to lead an integrated youth development approach in South Africa, which means that it must mainstream youth issues into society. It must facilitate the implementation of youth development across all sectors of society, whilst uh, as an agency we are also expected to implement certain programs and projects that directly uh, speak to youth development in our country. So given the broadness of the development issues that are required uh, in developing young South Africans, as an agency we have taken a decision to focus mainly on skills development and entrepreneurship as we think that these two areas uh, will contribute immensely in making sure that young people are, one, prepared uh, to be able to be absorbed by the economy, whether as job seekers or as the owners of the economy or as entrepreneurs. And uh, we think that if we can succeed in these two issues, we will be able to ensure that uh, we deal decisively with the question of uh, unemployment and poverty of which young people find themselves in the courses. Um. More than 40 learners from uh, Ratanga, which is outside Johannesburg, participated at the launch of the NSFAS 2018 application window. The learners were from local schools who, can, who came in and completed the manual application forms and attached supporting documents to apply for funding. The same thing was happening throughout other NYDA offices nationwide. Our reporter, Mandy Abrahams, went out and spoke to some of the students and learners who came through. Hi, this is Mandy from NISVAS, and we are in Kyalicha testing the 2018 application form. We've got Sikilel Waya, who's recently graduated, and she's going to tell us about high school and her application form experience. Hello, Mandy. My name is Sikilel Omafu, and I studied at Marin RC High School in 2016. I graduated. I applied for NSFAS in 2016, and my experience of the previous form is that the form was too long as it kept on asking similar questions all the time. It was a bit confusing. Unfortunately, my application was not successful, which is why I'm applying again. My experience of this, of this new form is that it is much easier as it gives useful information for me, and I could fully understand it. And it only took me five minutes to fill it in. Uh, that was uh, Elena, who was uh, at Kaelicha, who was trying the new application from form that was introduced uh, by uh, NSFAS. Um, in the studio, we are now uh, joined by uh, Victor Rambau. I want us now to focus our discussion to the new form, the application process, and what to do and not to do when applying for NSFAS, and what are the key important things that you should know about when uh, applying. Mr. Rambau, thank you very much for joining us. Good evening to listeners. Mr. Rambau is the head of uh, business enablement at the National Student Financial Aid uh, Scheme. Uh, uh, can you just help us also to understand a little bit about your partnership with the NYDA? So as, as the CEO of uh, NYDA was explaining, I think uh, for us it was critical that uh, since we focus predominantly on young people, we needed to find an entity which of course will be a government institution mm -hmm where we can work jointly in, in trying to bring uh, all critical uh, elements of uh, building capacity through development of young people. As a result, we then uh, engaged with NYDA because they, they have enough uh, presence on the ground across the country. Actually, they, 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 they work together with uh, 115 uh, local youth offices and they have 15 branches across the country of their own. 
And it was on that basis that we felt if we were to engage with NYDA, we would be able to reach uh, all young people across the country. This must have been a most challenging uh, task. One could imagine the amount of efforts and work and the capacity you built in. And, and I must actually acknowledge and, and give thanks to the team at NYDA and NS First. Putting this together was a huge task. We were actually still recovering from uh, that arrangement where we had to work very hard, you know, throughout uh, different uh, days, uh, day and night, to, to make sure that uh, the 1st of August uh, was a successful uh, launch. And a few step backs. Remind us, what is NESFAS about and what do you do? So uh, NESFAS is actually a bursary and loan scheme. And, and uh, listeners will actually understand that I've actually changed the words from loans and bursaries into bursaries and loan simply because the, the amount of uh, loans and bursaries that we give out, you could actually beyond doubt confirm that we are a bursary scheme. So basically what NISFAS is all about is a national student financial aid scheme which uh, predominantly uh, focus on helping uh, young people through provision of uh, financial assistance for them to, to be able to access uh, higher education institutions, be it uh, universities and, and Tibet colleges. Okay. Uh, how is the 2017 um, different to the 2018 application process? The, the, there is actually a massive difference. Uh, in in uh, 2017, or the application process to the 2017 academic year, we experienced quite a lot of challenges, particularly you know throughout the actual application process. We took feedback from uh, young people who experienced the, the, the long process of applying through our internet platform and we took a decision to say we need to improve how we, we, we did things. The 2017 application process as an example it had uh, 17 uh, and 11 pages the, uh, the actual application form. We required quite a lot of documents that uh, students or matriculants had to, to send through to us. As a result the, the process took forever. Actually certain students decided to give up because they were just not getting through. 2018 is completely a different experience. Our application uh, form has not been reduced to only two pages. You go into internet online. Within five to ten minutes, you then complete the application. Um, give us the application dates. I understand you open on the 1st of August. Uh, when do you plan to close? So we, we opened on the 1st of August and we plan to close on the 30th of November. And it is important for us to actually pass or send this message to young people. Please apply now because if you were to wait for the rush towards the end of, of November, you, you may be one of those who won't be lucky uh, enough to, to then get through. So it's important that young people start to apply now. And who should apply? So people who should apply, let's start with the, those who are currently in grade 12, uh, who obviously are looking forward to go into tertiary institution, at both universities and Tibet colleges that are public owned. Uh, we also urge those who are currently at uh, you know institutions of higher learning who were not successful uh, with their funding application last year to also apply. It is critical to, to mention that uh, those who we call returning students or students who are funded this year by NESFAS, they do not need to apply, uh, of course, provided that they meet the minimum requirement of advancing into the the next year, we, we have made a commitment last year that we guaranteed uh, their funding. Actually, we, we, we've made a policy change where we're saying if you are funded by NESFAS, we will see you through your, your academic qualification. So gone are the days where students were expected to reapply every year. I would like us at a later stage to go back to the currently funded students who don't have to apply because I could imagine that it should be a very uh, high, 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 high number. I want us to go back on the line. Um, I'm advised that um, we, we, we do have um, Patko from Aluwal uh, North who's calling in with, with a question. Uh, Patko, are you ready to share with you? Yes, I'm ready to share all right, that is the carriage. I did be my friend. Rambo, all right, Rambo, all right. Kilabula, all that. Eh, put a little bit of a 
questions uh, uh, Mr. Ramukumba I'm not sure if you were able to get the question from uh, Patko he asked about the forms where can they get the NESFAS application forms and also he asked about the network considering that uh, most applicants may be coming from rural areas and without uh, connectivity can you try to respond to this question also touching on the role of uh, the NYDA offices uh, th- thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, let me start with the issue of connectivity. Uh, all the local youth offices uh, where the uh, application processes will be happening and all full service branches of the NYDA uh, does have internet connectivity. We have prepared for that to make sure that uh, there are no disruptions when young people go there to apply uh, for, for funding. But over and above that, specifically with regards to the full service branches of the NYDA, all the full service branches of the NYDA have been turned into Wi-Fi hotspots, uh, which means that uh, that will be a backup connectivity plan, and also that will further allow us an opportunity in, uh, in cases where the number of uh, young people who require assistance uh, at the offices uh, is too high. We can be able to get them to be guided to be able to do the application using their own cell phones because they will be able to connect to the internet uh, because of the Wi-Fi connectivity that we have provided in all those offices. Uh, but uh, briefly looking at the um, mandate of the NYDA, uh, as I tried to explain earlier when the connection was bad, um, the institution was formed to replace uh, the National Youth Commission as well as the Umso Umbu Youth Fund. Uh, just to briefly reflect, the Youth Commission had the responsibility of lobbying and advocating for youth development across all sectors of society, whilst the Umso Umbu Youth Fund had the responsibility of ensuring that young people are incorporated in the mainstream economy of our country, mainly through programs aimed at skills development as well as entrepreneurship uh, by young people. So what has then happened is that the agency, having been a replacement of these two agencies, took over those two uh, uh, mandates from the two institutions, which were combined into one. But over and above that, we were then given the responsibility of ensuring that there is integrated youth development in the country, which means that uh, through facilitation and mainstreaming efforts, we bring together the efforts of both government and at all three spheres of government, as well as the efforts of the private sector and civil society uh, organizations to uh, uh, deliver youth development in our country. We do implement um, youth development programs and projects ourselves directly, um, but given the limited resources, we have prioritized specific areas which we think that if we intervene decisively on them, we will be able to ensure that uh, the development of young people becomes a little bit easier and the incorporation both in society and in the economy of the country will become a little bit easier. These focus areas uh, for this particular year, a financial year, 
uh, skills development as well as uh, entrepreneurship because uh, the majority of our young people are locked outside of the South African dream of a better life for all because they lack uh, the skills that are required by the economy. So we design programs that are aimed at providing them with skills that will enable them to provide either labor um, to the economy or to the needs of the economy or at least enable them to be able to start their own enterprises which will support, which can then deliver on the requirements and the demands of the future economy of South Africa. Okay. Hundred one four two double four six. We are coming to you live from uh, Pretoria. This is the NSFAS uh, radio program in collaboration with GCIS. We are talking about the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. The applications for 2017 uh, have been uh, open. Back to uh, NYDA. Mr. Ramukumba, could you please... Um, Take us through the, 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 the assistance that is available. I understand that um, there are young people that have been employed to guide whoever will be working in. And uh, are these trained well enough to be able to deal with the challenges that may come? I think they, they are trained uh, well enough uh, because uh, I think uh, one of the good things that we must be able to appreciate, specifically from NASA, is that uh, the, the application form, uh, previously it used to be very long, if I'm not mistaken, it was close to 12 pages or so. Whereas what NASFAS has done uh, this year is to simplify the form. Uh, the form is only four pages long, which then makes the application process itself a lot more easier. So the, 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 uh, the officers will be stationed at all these uh, offices where the application process will be provided have been fully trained to be able to understand the form itself, the process that must be followed. And the guidance that will be provided really is that for those who will be applying online, they will be assisted to make sure that they go through the process correctly and complete it correctly so that their applications can be able to be processed uh, so that they can be able to get their assistance. But over and above uh, the online application process, which our officers are trained to, to provide guidance on, uh, these officers are further trained to be able to undertake the application process on behalf of applicants. So what you will find when you go to our centers is that there are two ways to be assisted. You can be assisted with the actual online application process or you can complete the form manually. Uh, you can complete it at the comfort of your own home. You can just come to the center and drop it off. There will be uh, allocated spaces uh, for drop-off. So you drop your form there and our officers will then capture that form on your behalf and ensure that we are able to access the opportunity to at least be considered for funding for the 2018 calendar year. Okay. Mr. Rambau, um, uh, from the NESFA side, what are the supporting documents that are required when you, you apply, uh, both manually and uh, online? So the, the good thing is that the application process is the same if you are applying manually or online. What we need is your copy of your ID uh, for those who actually... Uh, don't stay with the parents or those who have lost parents and affidavit to, to, to also support that. Uh, those who stay with people who are employed who may actually be supporting more than you know one child or actually they're finding it difficult to send other students to university, copy of their salary advice. And what is critical, of course, you know, for those who are currently at uh, universities, your, your, your academic results, we will be able to, to receive those. Those who are in grade 12 uh, we will need a copy of your latest uh, academic results. You don't necessarily have to wait until you finish matric. You can give us what you do currently have at the moment. And I understand that uh, during the launch when the CEO was uh, announcing, he did mention that there is a need for the parents to sign the consent form. Tell us w w what is that all about and why is it important? Uh, it is very important uh, because we, we want to ensure that we fund the poorest of the poor. When we ask for parents to send the consent form, it's for us to be able to go and fetch information which we can validate to then say the information that we've been uh, presented with, is it actually correct? And if it is correct, then we can then proceed to, 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 to evaluate the application uh, form. Without a consent form, we are not legally allowed to go and ask for anyone's information. So that's why we need uh, parents to sign the consent form.
And why do you need to go and, you know? It, it, it is important uh, to, to, to say this to the public. Our funding is limited based on the amount of money that we receive. So it's very important that when we fund students, we are 100% certain that we funded the correct students. Now, when we get the consent form, we can then send that consent to the credit bureau to then say, can you then tell us if this parent is employed or not? If the parent is employed, how many other accounts do they have? Because if you look at the, really what we're doing, we're trying to support those who cannot afford. Now, if, if parents are not planning properly to, to take uh, kids to university, we will also get an indication to say, you know, is this an issue of you know poor financial planning on the parent side, or they're actually indebted because of things that they really need? I, as an example, if a parent is paying for a house, we'll understand that your parent is paying for a house, and if they're taking kids to to universities and they've got more than two or three kids, we'll then be able to get an indication if they can afford to to take the third child to university. Okay, we've got Sol from uh, Limpopo, Tobela. Tobe. Eh, bongak. Negeri Kondes. Orang mana rela nak rale nak putih rale na? Eh, di negeri Cebu ini, di Indonesia ini, kamu studio ramal NYTA. Nampaknya di negeri aku ni putih cakap di Indonesia saja. Agar rena mau makan limpo po boleh berjaya. Rena lembut tata babu di internet aja. Hei, lori, kita kita kau ni, mana coba? a apply ka online joali botata go buki go di internet ke ya matho make nke le gore go ntse le ba thelitse go se bedela community review ba ino gore ba ka le ka ka se di mosheja le na le le ano la gore le ke le ke le di province mo ene gore o tla kwala kwatsa ya be gore ba ana ba tsi gore go na le road show go ba in diesel like mo ene re ba tla ka ba le bona persona di le bile ba khumana khumana thuso information together with NYDA Ranali plan ya rutle rutle vali di roadshows across the country. The roadshows say here vali jo na wata vali li vene ita vai sipilang le rena vene ita vai na li connectivity ya wifi. Reason ya rasipile le vene kuri here fitla mo community ni ali na rutle tu sa di student ka di application form or here rasipile rasipile rutle wa rudi form za ba na ka 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 village ni kamo ka difficulty. Um, ni kile rutle usi jamfa ka eh matata ailongori as the national student financial aid scheme you have experience in the previous year with regard to uh, retaining students uh, that were applying earlier in, i said to you i want us to come back and talk about these 2017 students that are funded by nesfas that do not have to apply so one of the critical issues that uh, we, we need to advise students on is if you are a NESFAS funded student, we have what we call a loan agreement form for those who are at uh, universities and we've got a schedule of particulars for those who are at TVET colleges. Until such time that a student signs this document for us to have them on our records, meaning in our database we have this uh, uh, document completed by the student, technically you are not funded by NESFAS, which means when we search you in the system, it will still say you are provisionally funded, but because you have not signed these documents, you are not fully funded. Which then means when you apply or you do not apply for 2018, there's no guarantee that your funding will be there in 2018. So it's important that students must complete these documents. One of the key challenges that we experienced in uh, coming into 2017 academic year was that most of the 2016 applications or applicants signed manually through different universities and different colleges. It took us a bit of time to upload those into the system so that we can then actually have a record to say we have funded this student in 2017, therefore you should not reapply in 20, uh, in, I mean, in 2016, and therefore you should not reapply in 2017. 
So it is critical for all NESFAS funded students to sign this document so that we can have it on record that you are funded. If you do that, then you do not have to reapply. But if you don't complete this process, as far as we're concerned, you are not funded. How is NESFAS going to deal with uh, one of the challenges that uh, you, 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 you had in 2017 with regard to confirmation and proving that the students have applied? I would like you to, to, to touch on that because it, is, it was a big uh, issue uh, at the beginning of, of the year. Uh, Kuli, welcome back. Uh, Kuli, are you back on the line? Uh, I'm back on the line, uh, yes. Sahisa. Thank you so much. Yes, you can go ahead. All right, thank you. Uh, so I was saying I had a friend of mine, sister, who um, was funded by NASFAS. And um, they paid for her studies up until a certain time. But then uh, up until she finished her studies, there was a time that apparently NASFAS didn't pay. So that um, oh, that happened that she couldn't get her diploma when she was uh, graduating she was told that a certain amount is still outstanding and her mother had to pay for her to to get her diploma now what uh, how can NASFAS ensure um, that they are secured for okay Okay, I, I, I think we, we, we did get uh, Kuli's point, and it's, it's a very important po uh, question that she, she's raising. L let's start by explaining it in this way. NESFAS only started to take the application process away from universities and Tibet colleges in 2017, which means records that were kept by universities from 2016 going back, if we do not have that record in our system, it will be difficult for us to then say the student is funded. Now, the problem that Kuli raised where she said uh, the friend of her sister was funded up to a certain time, it talks back to some of the key strategic issues that we had to deal with where students were expected to reapply every year, which means if you were funded in 2013, there was no guarantee that in 2014 you'll be funded, and similarly 2015 and 2016. As a, as, as a result, we then decided to take a strategic decision to say we're funding our students for the duration of their studies, which means if you continue to meet the minimum requirements, which is that of passing 50% of the subjects that you are enrolled, we will continue to fund you. But it is critical to reemphasize this point that if a student does not sign a loan agreement form or a schedule of particulars, as far as NESFAS is concerned, that student is not funded. So the, the, currently the working hours, of course, it's, it's from 8 to 5, Monday to, to Friday. But uh, since our intention as an entity is to respond to the needs of our clientele, which is students, if we do see that there is a necessity for us to then maybe extend working hours, more so that during the week most of the students are at school, we may then need to, to consider extending our operating hours to, through to, to Saturdays. Okay. And back to the question of the um, tracing the application and making sure that the application was received is all in order? W one of the key messages that uh, when applicants visit our, our stations that we're putting forward is to say, if you can't prove it, it means we don't have it. What that simply means is when you complete your application online, you will get a reference number immediately when you push send. You will receive a reference number. That reference number is what you will use continuously with us if you have queries as we proceed with the process of uh, evaluating your application throughout to, to the funding stage. Similarly, for those who will take uh, you know, manually completed forms, when you drop your form at what we call the drop zones, which is your local youth offices, you'll be given a reference number. There will be a card which looks like a small business card where a record of the reference number that is on your form will be the same reference number that you will leave with on the card. It is important to also advise listeners that NESFAS does not sell its forms, which means you must be given that form for free. Our forms are not in black and white, they are color forms, which therefore means do not retake or accept a copied form because we will simply not uh, be able to help you uh, on, on that basis. 
Okay. Uh, Mr. Ramukumba, welcome back. Thank you very much. Um, tell us about this uh, partnership. Uh, would it would it not put a strain in terms of what the work of NYDA is doing now that you will be carrying more the NSFAS work? Um, not, not really. Um, we, we have done a proper assessment of um, the additional work uh, that will come with the responsibilities of facilitating the application processes for the 2018 calendar year in society's applications for NASFAS assistance is concerned. And what we have done in collaboration with NASFAS is to recruit uh, at least uh, about 115 uh, previously unemployed graduates uh, to support this particular problem. So in the NRD branches, um, uh, as and when young people visit uh, these branches to be assisted with the application process, in each branch they will find two dedicated officers whose responsibility is only uh, to deal with the NASFAS application process so that uh, the other daily programming of the NYD is not necessarily disrupted by this uh, responsibility that we have taken on in order to ensure that all young people in all corners of our country are able to be provided with the opportunity and access uh, to be able to be funded through a uh, network. Okay. Um, before I let you go, uh, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Katu, you, you you did mention that there is a, a connectivity at your 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 centers. Uh, they can apply online and they can do this and that. Will they be able to print? Will they be able to scan? Because those are the most important things, especially that uh, a, 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 a consent form has been mentioned that parents must sign. Does your centers have those facilities? Yes, so all the centers are uh, fully equipped with the uh, with the facilities which will enable that uh, if a young person brings a copy of ID and affidavit and so forth, those are able to be uploaded and be sent directly to the application center where the actual application process will happen. So all the centers are fully um, uh, uh, equipped and of course uh, we will be uh, doing a monitoring process which will ensure that should there be glitches in the process, such are identified timely and they are attended to timely to make sure that the young people do not get frustrated when they get to the centers uh, and they need assistance in the application process. Okay. I would like you to tell us how to get hold of your, your centers. If I'm in Pretoria and I want to know where your centers are, how can I go about that? And before you do that, say let's take one caller from Hamans Kral uh, uh, Moretti. Good evening and welcome. Moretti, good evening and welcome. Uh, hello, Dr. Papa. Re Juana Ralena. Re Tele, Kratoli Dimedi Sakofela. Tavela. Le voile Moretti Mosala mo amaskra. Eh. Me tuko pa ho tsa papa ho re like ka qualify ho apply for NSF if in ho re sa le ka study ali another institution and then e le re institution e ene ke study ali ona. funded by NESFAS before or you were not funded? 
uh, I was not funded because I, I was I did apply for MSPAC and then Azanga Grace and Ms. Azanga Grace will make it. I was make it part of the GDP international or make it demand it. So we will work the Atrocopal and then Atrocopal card to a school and then Kalpatella card. In Tennessee, we did Kalpatella card, Tennessee, we will take a gram and then Kalpatella. We will make sure we can connect or get apply and then give the cost in one. Yes, we can apply and you, you can do another course. Uh, but maybe just on the side to, to, to maybe advise you, the, the current academic results that you have, it's important that when you apply for another course, you apply for something similar to what you were doing so that you can be credited some of the coursework that you, you have already passed. Uh, as and as far as our policy, it's simple. If you want to go to a public-owned uh, university or TVET college, then we, we are we are happy to, to, to then receive your application and process it and see if we can then fund you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Very, oh, le catch you up, Lema. Okay. Hello, Mama. How may I be Lema Rahu, who Mr. Katu, who's still on the line? Katu, I've asked earlier that um, yeah. how accessible are your your offices? Where can we find? Uh, 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 those offices to know exactly where they are? Um, uh, all our offices, uh, specifically the local youth offices, are established in partnership with local municipalities. So uh, the offices are easily accessible in that uh, in the majority they are found in municipal offices where people frequent for other services that government offers. So they are across uh, all municipalities uh, across the country. Of course, uh, as we have indicated, the hundreds that we've selected are those that are fully functional, where young people, when they go there to apply uh, for the master's uh, process, they will be able to find someone who will assist them with the process. But to get a list of um, all of these uh, hundred offices that we're speaking about, uh, I would like to direct uh, all the listeners to the NYDA website, uh, which is www.nyda. .gov.za. We have listed all these local youth offices so they are able to, if they go to the website, be able to see which site is the nearest to where they reside. Um, alternatively, those who don't have access to uh, the internet who can be able to go to the website, they can call this toll free number of the NYDA, which is 0800 525252. Uh, that number, they will be able to get in touch with one of our call center agents, and uh, if they indicate the area in which they reside, they will be able to be provided with information about the nearest uh, office uh, that is close to them, where they can be able to go and get assistance with the application process. If you can repeat that number again. It's 0800 525252. Thank you very much, Mr. Ramokumba. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thank you very much for Okay. On the line now, we joined by Mkwevu uh, 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 from uh, Eastern Cape. Good evening and thank you very... Uh, good evening and thank you for joining us. Okay, what is it? Hey, Account. Hello, can you go on with your question? Okay, yeah. But but your comment now is is political. I think what we are discussing this evening is how uh, NYDA has partnered with 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 NS First. Mm.
Okay. No, thank you very much for, for your yeah. comment. Okay. I'll, I'll let Mr. Rambau to, to respond to that. Mr. Rambau, uh, the question, the concern here is that um, uh, uh, this partnership is not good because it's, it's, it's party political. Uh, in summary, but before you respond, there's uh, a Stembiso from uh, 2UT who's joining us. Stembiso, good evening and welcome. Uh, good evening, sir. Hi. I'm fine, thanks. Your question, we have very few minutes uh, left. If you could just be brief. No, my question is very much straightforward. We have we have graduates or people who have students who have fin finished studying, but they still have the same fees. You know, my, what I want to ask you is to say, how can MFS assist for them to have? access to their diploma or degrees because they are still having outstanding fees to the institution. They can't have their degrees and, and diplomas. So by that they cannot even be able to job hands. Okay. Stempi, so um are you talking about students that are still um uh, uh, studying, they are continuing post grad or they've left but they their their uh, diplomas are withheld by the institution? Yes, I'm going to post to the diploma that we shared by the institution. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Mr. Rambo? So, so maybe let's uh, deal Stembiso's question. We, a, a year ago, we, we actually asked uh, universities to give us information of all students who were owing uh, institutions, and we then uh, had a structure that we called historic debt universities made their submissions and we, we have actually off, off of the money that we asked from the government we had to redirect part of it back into the mainstream of funding uh, other students simply because the numbers that universities had given us were actually not the actual uh, demand that we had there so my advice to, to Stembi so and I suppose other colleagues that he is uh, studying with is to go and engage with the university the university will know what process to follow and once we receive the university submission, we will uh, deliberate on how best we can resolve this issue. But it's, it's also critical to, to also make this emphasis that uh, that is something that we will need to resolve together with the Department of Higher Education. It's not going to be a quick solution. We won't receive uh, the list of students, then all of a sudden everyone will be given their diplomas or degrees. Okay. Maybe let's just, uh, because time is not on our side, let's just go back to closing date, supporting documents, uh, who should apply in brief, and contact numbers where they can get hold of NESFAS if um, uh, they can't uh, get any assistance uh, uh, from uh, 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 the NYDA. So people who should apply are those who we call first come uh, entrance into our system, those who have never been funded by NSFAS. Either you're doing your metric this year or you've passed, you're currently at university and you still require financial assistance. The supporting documents are not a lot. Your copy of your ID, those who are already studying at university will be able to access the academic results and those who have passed metric but could not go through to university We'll need you to submit a copy of your grade 12 uh, certificates. And of course, if you need to give us an affidavit to support your case, either because you don't have uh, people who are supporting you, either your parents have passed on, you, you must do that. And those who have uh, members of the family who are actually employed, that consent form is very important and they will need a copy of your seller advice. Okay. The opening date, 1st of August. Before you go on, there's just one caller that let me take. Let me squeeze Stirman. Uh, uh, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hey, thank you very much. What's your question? Okay. Hey. last year. Okay. Applying, applying, 
And Kosebo, I think the question there is about uh, response. How long does it take to get a response from Nesfas? He had the same problem this year. And also, do you have partnership with basic education? Can you consider utilizing the schools as one of the points of distributing the application forms? Okay, let, let, let's start with the one uh, regarding the answer. So the final outcome of uh, the, what we call the funding decision will only happen in January for grade 12 students. For those who are currently at university, where we can access the academic results in December, we will be able to give them the final uh, funding decision. So, so so members of the public would, would recall that the NESFA system is not based on first come, first serve. We accumulate all the application forms from the 1st of August to the 30th of November. Beyond that, then we start doing what we call the ranking process to see who's the most deserving student, and then we go down all the way to the least uh, deserving student. The second uh, comment around, can we not then maybe look at uh, different options on how we can uh, make NESFAS accessible to, 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 to members of the public? We, we, we continuously uh, take ideas on how best we can improve uh, the way we do things, hence the change that uh, this year we've implemented. And we'll continue to do so. If, if uh, members of the public find it easy to, to get things through your, 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 yeah, your secondary schools or even your admins uh, centers, we are we, we, we willing to, to look at that as, as options going forward. Okay. Uh, Victor Rambau is the head of business enablement at the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Just wrap up with that number for NSFAS that they must uh, call or if there is any email address uh, or t- social media. The, the number to call if uh, you need uh, us to assist you, it's uh, 086-0067-327. 086-00-67327. Okay, and then that number for the National Youth Development Agency is 0800-5252-52. And thank you very much. That's it. We have come to the end of our program, my Nesfas Radio program, brought to you by the National Student Financial Aid Scheme and uh, Government Communications, GCIS. My name is Kahisho Mamabolo. Until next time. Thank you.